Friends, if, if I, know I know one thing to be true, it is this. There are not enough anteaters in video games. I love anteaters, man. They're just such interesting animals. They look ordinary enough as far as furry four-legged mammals go, but then their faces are just like, yomp. They're named in a pretty straightforward way too, anteater. I mean, yeah, they eat ants. I feel like we take that for granted. I mean, just look at dogs. I love dogs, don't get me wrong, but where in the heck did the name dog come from? Is it Latin? Is it Greek? I don't know. There's probably an explanation, but just like take it on face value. Dog, dog, dog. If you say it enough times, it starts to sound like an alien name or something. Me, I'm Gorgas. Him, Blue Star. This is Dog. Oh! Back to anteaters. The anatomy of their faces work in such a way that they can whip their tongues into an anthill and go to town. So the name just makes perfect sense. It's like window washer or UN operative. Seeing as how anteaters are such nifty animals whose abilities perfectly accommodate their name and shape, you'd think more game designers would utilize anteater-inspired designs for summons, enemies, bosses, or even full-on playable characters in their games. But alas, I had the darndest time tracking down any examples of anteaters in video games for this video, let alone exemplary ones. And I wasn't about to cheat either. I know Knuckles the Echidna is technically a spiny anteater, but give me a break. Would you put Tom Nook in your best video game dogs list just because a tanuki is technically a raccoon dog? No, you wouldn't. And don't even say you would, you liar. If by the end of this list you think to yourself, where was such and such anteater from such and such game? Please put it in the comments, because I want to be aware of all the anteaters in gaming. You have no idea. And now, without further ado, I present to you the top five anteaters in video games. Gosh, this video is going to tank my analytic. Number five, Anteater from the arcade game Anteater. How do you like that, folks? One of the earliest computer games to ever be made was about an anteater called Anteater. I'm telling you, the way they look and behave, they lend themselves so well to game design. Even as far back as the early 80s, game designers saw the potential in using the tip of an anteater's extendable tongue to go through a maze like anthill picking up ants from behind, and in turn scoring points by eating them. All the while, obstacles come in the form of ants biting from other angles. It's brilliant in terms of arcade sensibilities. Though if one thing about this game's aged poorly, it's this artwork of the titular character. Anteaters' mouths and noses are both at the tip of the snout, dude. They're not aardvarks. Number 4. Catch a Watcha from Monster Hunter 4. I'm admittedly not much of a Monster Hunter guy. No joke, I think I've tried every single demo for every Monster Hunter game made available across Wii U and Switch. But admittedly, never had a great time with any of them. But regardless, just look at this guy, isn't he great? The Monster Hunter Wiki describes Ketchawacha as being lemur-like, with flying squirrel and elephant attributes, but it more so reminds me of the Tamandua, an anteater species from South America that climbs trees and is overall adorable. The behavior of the Ketchawacha, I'll admit, is functionally closer to a primate than it is to a a myrmecophagid. He is but a myrmecophagid, you see. Ketchawacha is more monkey than anteater, but I wanted to shout it out on this list anyway because I appreciate Monster Hunter's attention to detail when fleshing out the characteristics and behaviors of the enemies. That aspect alone edged out Ketchawacha over some other examples of anteaters and games you'll see in the honorable mentions later on. Number 3, Heatmore from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. I'm gonna level with you people. I'm not much of a Pokemon guy either. I like a lot about it, but I haven't played any mainline games since Sapphire and have no intention of changing that fact at this time. Unless Legends Arceus counts, but even then I don't have much confidence I'll enjoy it too much. And yes, by the way, I pronounce it Arceus. It just sounds better, it looks like that's what it's supposed to say. I don't care if you're from the UK and it sounds like Arce. Saying Arceus is just so archaic, I can't get used to it, I won't get used to it, it's Arceus. Deal with it. Tirade right over. Anywho, despite not being much of a Pokemon fan, that can't stop me from appreciating the fact that this gen not only introduced an anteater Pokemon with a sick fire theme, but also volcanic ant Pokemon for them to eat. I want to see these guys in the next Pokemon Snap, man! Oh, also, I want there to be a next Pokemon Snap. <laughs> Please don't come back just to go away again. All my exes do this to me! Number 2. Snipe Anteater from Mega Man X7 Mega Man X7 is generally considered to be one of, if not the weakest, of the Mega Man X games. But darn it if I don't love the Robot Masters in this game. I mean, just look at how cool this guy looks. It makes me wonder why there's never been an Anteater Digimon, or Anteater Gundam, or Anteater Bionicle or something. 
The long snout lends itself perfectly to being a gun or a laser or a plasma whip or ah, oh, there's so much potential. Not to mention the long claws that are a severely underrated aspect of anteaters. Those things could tear through the earth. That's why they walk on their freaking knuckles. Oh, I could gush forever, but if I'm gonna do this stupid video, I've gotta at least try and keep it under 10 minutes long. All in all, I love you, Snipe Anteater, and I hope you're ahead of your time in terms of cool robot anteater designs. Before we move on to number one, here are some honorable mentions. I could have given them each a spot to themselves and make this a top nine list, but one, I already know this video is not going to do well on YouTube, so why bother making this longer than it needs to be? And two, my main goal with this video was just to communicate my love of anteaters as well as my love for unique ideas pertaining to nature influencing game design. Giant Anteater from Zoo Tycoon 2 and this random Anteater minion from Final Fantasy XIV are both too innocuous to be lauded for their game integration. Ant Guzzler is simply one of a zillion monsters from the Dragon Quest series that can be based on seemingly anything without making contextual sense to the world organically. Which yeah, I guess that reasoning could apply to Pokemon too, but they get bonus points for it in my book because the safari-like aspects of the Pokemon world used to be my favorite thing about it. Pokemon's decline does not pertain to my feelings toward Heatmore. Leave him alone. He's a good boy. And lastly, Cyrano is just, in the context of Animal Crossing, one of the guys. Not really a mechanically or functionally unique instance of an anteater being integrated into a game. I do appreciate the literary reference in his name, though. Now with the honorable mentions out of the way, let's get to number one. Whip Tongue Bulborb from Pikmin 3. Behold, one of the most inspired anteaters in gaming to exist, period. Pikmin are already so much like ants in so many ways. They travel around in groups, carry big things back to their bases, and of course, are teeny tiny and easy prey for many a critter. It's actually a little bit funny, come to think of it, that it took Nintendo till the third game to be like, oh, we should probably have an anteater enemy in Pikmin, huh? And making it a member of the Bulborb family was a nice touch, as they're probably the most iconic baddies in the franchise. Even if there were more examples of anteaters in games for me to choose from for this list, the whip tongue Bulborb would have almost certainly made it to the number one spot. Well, that was my list. You may think it was pretty random and not at all that interesting or relevant, but hey, it's my channel, and sometimes I just fixate on the stupidest things. But on the off chance you've enjoyed this video and made it this far, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Liking, commenting, and sharing would be very much appreciated. Almost as appreciated as my Patreon supporters, who I appreciate more than mere words can describe. If you'd like to be appreciated on that level too, in addition to supporting the show, getting behind the scenes updates, and a credit right here at the end of my videos, please pledge as little as $1 a month to patreon.com forward slash a talking sock. Thanks again for watching. I will see you the next time I see you.